We are only 46k away from VIP 12 and we have way more than 46k gems. But basically, I'm waiting for more than gems so that I can get more value by spending the same amount of gems. I'm telling you, bro, I'm the Lord Varys of Rise of Kingdoms. I have little birds too. The only difference between him and me is that I still have my p What's going on my beautiful governors? Welcome to a new Rise of Kingdoms video. Since Modern Gems is here, I wanted to answer to a question that I keep getting in my comment section. How do you have so many gems, Spartan? Well, two questions actually. How and why? How is pretty simple. This account, I'm super active on this account. I'm playing every single event to my maximum capacity. Uh, <laughs> but the real answer is, uh, of course, it does give me a lot of gems, being active and online, whatever, playing events. Uh, I do spend money. I mean, if you've been following our account update videos, you know that exactly how much I spent, exactly what purchase that I made. So that is the second, well, not the second, but the main reason how I have so many gems. But the real question that I wanted to answer is not how, because it's pretty obvious, the why section. Why do I have so many gems? Why am I spending my gems? It's been how many days? 82 days. We are not a high spender, by the way. People are spending like hundreds or even thousands of dollars within a day i think we are around 700 dollars in total uh, but we have 200,000 gems now the why is a lot more complicated so today why modern gems event is here i wanted to go over that and answer your question in rise of kingdoms there are four main things well actually five but four main things that you need to spend your gems vip t5 sculptures and equipment the fifth one is armaments of course, they have a major role in the late game when they're available. However, the thing about armaments is that they are kind of random. Of course, developers are working on it. They are trying to make it so that the more time, effort and gems that you spend on armaments, uh, you are going to get more consistent results, like better armaments in general for that specific troop type that you are working on. But right now, in my opinion, for free to plays, low spenders, even for mid spenders, if on the scale you are like closer to low spender, rather than a high spender as a mid spender, uh, you shouldn't spend your gems in armaments, in my opinion. That's my personal advice. Now, VIP, T5, sculptures and equipment. Let's go over VIP. To me, for the vast majority of players, there is one major VIP goal, which is VIP 14. The reason is quite obvious. Every single day, you are going to get three legendary commander sculptures. Even if you go all the way to VIP 14, you again still going to get three legendary commander sculptures yes of course the ip 17 16 18 has insane benefits but the major role of vip for low spenders low mid spenders and free to plays of course is collecting sculptures because this is the main source of getting sculptures in rise of kingdoms for us we are right now at vip 11 in fact actually we are going to spend some gems for vip today because we have more than gems. If you're a neighbor player, if you don't know what more than gems event is, it's a two day event. Every single day, you can spend up to 25,000 gems. So, in total, 25 day one, 25 day two, 50,000 gems. And in return, you are going to get all these rewards both days. So, in total, if we just take a look at the sculptures 13 sculptures day one and another 13 sculptures day two, 26 sculptures in two days. Obviously, VIP, until you get VIP 14, is my favorite thing to spend my gems during more than gems or any time basically but we are in a weird situation because if we spend 25,000 we are going to be at 347,000 vip so we are missing 3,000 vip points should we still spend our gems to get vip 12 today or should we wait for tomorrow well the answer is quite obvious of course you want to spend it why you shouldn't spend when you are so close to next level of vip because VIP 12 is going to start giving us two legendary commander sculptures. So what happens is, if I don't spend that extra 3000, I'm going to miss out on these two sculptures today. Because I will get VIP 12 tomorrow, and I will start getting two sculptures the next day. But the thing that you need to understand here, is that you are not spending 3000 gems to purchase two sculptures. In your Rise of Kingdoms gameplay, like months or even years, you are going to spend that 3000 on your VIP anyways, because you are not max VIP. Your goal is not VIP 12. Your goal is VIP 14. So that 3000 gems, as I said, will be spent for VIP at some point of your gameplay. So basically, the only thing that you are doing is that you are spending that amount a little bit early so that you can get extra two sculptures, because if I unlock VIP 12 today, I will get two sculptures today. In fact, let's go ahead and do it. Now, 
modern gems event is completed at least for this day we are going to collect all these beautiful rewards and as i said we are 3000 gems short one two three and boom vip 12 this is huge for our account and as you can see now i can claim this chest and get two extra sculptures the next thing on the list was tier 5 there are two main things that you need to spend your gems when it comes to unlocking your tier 5 number one is master's blueprint can be used to upgrade city buildings from level 24 to 25 there are only a couple of exceptions that you don't need a master's blueprint for example for your castle you don't need a master's blueprint but for majority of the buildings you are going to need it and it costs 2000 gems and the thing is there is no other way to get this item in the game you will have to spend 2000 gems if a master's blueprint is needed to upgrade a building from 24 to 25 so that is one of the main things that you can spend if you're done with vip 14 and now your next goal is t5 some people like to go for t5 first but some people values vip 14 over t5 and i'm one of those people so my first goal is vip 14 and then tier 5 and once this account reaches vip 14 what we are going to do during more than gems is for example purchasing some master's blueprints because as i said at some point you will have to spend that 2000 for every single master's blueprint because there is no other way to get them and the second thing will be your castle because it requires book of covenants yes there is a way to farm them as a free-to-play like you just rally a bunch of barbarian forts but it's going to take so freaking long you will probably have the resources and everything ready but you won't have the book of covenants to go for tier 5 which is going to be pretty annoying so at that point you will most likely spend your gems for book of covenants and a quick tip here don't ever ever spend your gems for era of resistances they are needed to upgrade your watchtower and of course you do need a level 25 watchtower for the maximum buildings however the difference between arrow of resistances by the way they both cost per arrow of resistance or book of covenants they both cost 10 gems but the main difference is this thing is a lot easier to farm compared to book of covenants so i don't think that you will have a hard time having you know maximum amount of error for resistances but book of covenants i cannot say the same thing i like these things at some point you are going to spend your gems to unlock your tier 5. the next one on the list where you can spend your gems is of course legendary commander sculptures right now we do have 433. one of the main resources for your sculptures is going to be of course vip and the other one there are a bunch of events but mainly wheel of fortune the thing about wheel of fortune though for example this is one of the reasons why i still have so many gems on my restart account is we did have a bunch of wheel of fortune so far uh, for cow cow other gold key commanders but you need to ask this question to yourself why would i spend my gems for cow cow sculptures who is only good for like 2 kvks and even though you spend all your gems in like two wheel of fortunes for cow cow you still won't be able to max him so what is the point when it comes to spending your gems for sculptures or wheel of fortune or whatever you need to ask yourself this question is this commander one of the best in the game there are a bunch of rise of kingdoms commander tier lists on youtube when it comes to you know individual commanders who are the best ones or the pairings in general what are the best archer pairings infantry cavalry whatever what you need to do is take a look at those videos and then you only want to spend your gems on those specific commanders my general rule of thumb for wheel of fortune is that you either go for 10 or you go for 100 i never go for something in between if that's a commander that i'm not interested or let's say i'm lacking gems i only go for 10 because that's the best value but if that wheel of fortune commander is someone who i'm trying to max expertise or get him to five 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 one whatever like that is one of my main commanders then i would go for 100 if i do have the gems by the way on the next section i'm going to discuss how many gems you should always 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 have in your bank because there are certain events that you definitely want to have enough gems so don't go anywhere it is coming soon right so the fourth one and the last one was equipment commanders and equipment as i said armaments are more like an rng thing so i don't like to spam my gems on them commanders and equipment are the main things i mean sculptures and equipment now when it comes to spending for equipment i made a video recently uh, please go ahead and watch it quote unquote best events best gem spending events in rise of kingdoms might be a total waste for you that is the title of the video and there we had one of the best events in the game for, for equipment blueprints and materials and that is holiness treasure aka egg event the event itself is great however even though that event is amazing you need to evaluate your situation your needs and what events offer at that time if that would offer me something that i really really need asap i will probably just go for 100 spend a lot of gems 
go for 100, but it didn't. And I've explained the whole thought process in that video, and I will link it at the end of this video, so make sure to watch it if you haven't. But to me, basically, there are two events that I am comfortable spending my gems for equipment, Holy Night's Treasure and Hunt for History. I think both offers amazing value. I don't go for Esmeralda. I don't think Esmeralda is good. And here's another quick tip that is about Hunt for History. In that event, basically, you collect hammers, and with those hammers, you go over floors and get equipment, you know, blueprints or materials, whatever. What you can do if you're a complete free to play and if you're really lacking gems, you can save those hammers for like a few events back to back. You don't have to spend those hammers, they don't go away. You can just save them in your inventory. What you do is you do collect enough hammers. I do also have a dedicated video like how many hammers do you exactly need to get the floor five? Because floor five, then you're going to get, I think it was like floor five, 10, 15. In those floors, you are going to get legendary blueprints, which is the main goal, of course, in the end game. What you need to do is you need to always have enough hammers to get to, let's say, floor 5 or 10. You don't want to stop at floor 3. You don't want to go out of hammers at floor 4. That is a complete waste. You save your hammers for 1, 2, maybe even 3 events or 4 events. And once you have enough hammers yeah, that you are comfortable, that you know that you will be able to get floor 5, 10 or whatever your goal is, and then you can spend all your hammers in one event. So Hunt for History, Holy Nice Treasure, I think the best events that you can spend your gems. Now, here's the most important thing. How many gems you want to save regardless of the events? Because there could be a Holy Nice Treasure, for example, or a really good Wheel of Fortune, that like a commander that I'm really interested. However, I always like to save a certain amount of gems. I always like to have a certain amount of gems, and I'll explain why. Ideally, you will want to have at least 50,000 gems on your bank so that you can finish more than gems both days for maximum value. However, for free to play or even low spenders, that is not always the case because Rise of Kingdoms always throws us uh, like a lot of gem spending events, right? And some of them are really good, so we're going to spend our gems. So saving 50k is not always possible. So what I would like to do is always save 14k gems so each day I can at least go for 7 when there is a more than gems event. Because if you cannot go for 25, the 7 is going to give you 7k gems, spending 7k gems during more than gems each day is going to give you the second best value. So 14k gems for 10 sculptures in total, I think that is amazing. So we need to have at least 14k gems, but that's not enough. The second thing is, if there is a seasonal event in the corner, then I would also like to save extra 7,000 gems as well. Because when there is a seasonal event, there is a high chance that we will get that fan favorite famous 7k gem event. Like the value is freaking amazing. Like 35 sculptures, you're going to get all the gems back, whatever. So 14k gems for more than gems events so that I can go each day 7 and 7. And also another 7k gems on top of that if there is a seasonal event coming soon, because that 7k gem event is basically the best event in Rise of Kingdoms. In total, that makes it 21,000 gems. If you are rich on gems, like we are right now, of course, ideally, you would like to save 57k, so that instead of 7 each day, you go for 25 each day for more than gems, and then again, 7k gem event for that seasonal event. Whew, that was a long one. Hope you guys liked it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I think that's a really valuable video. If you find it useful, make sure to hit like, hit subscribe. I'll see you on the next Rise of Kingdoms video. And here is that, here's that video that I explain why best events in Rise of Kingdoms are I mean, best events on paper, not always the best for every single player. Make sure to tap on it. I'll see you on that one. Goodbye.